This video is on feedback capacitors. What we want to look at here is what are the effects of a capacitor that is connected across an amplifier. The voltage gain across the amplifier is a gain translation from the input voltage to the output voltage. In this amplifier we're modeling it as a transconductor that has an equivalent low frequency transconductance and an equivalent output resistance. To model the effects of this capacitor, what we're first going to do is we're going to split them into the effects at the input and then the effects at the output. For that, we're going to use an equivalent Norton, Norton two-port model. This is very convenient for us because the test conditions for a Norton, Norton model are all short circuit conditions. So if we want to look at the equivalent input impedance here, we look at the impedance into the capacitor when the output is grounded. And the capacitor impedance when the output is grounded is just, again, as my words say it, a capacitor impedance, so the capacitor can model that impedance. Then we look at the gain translation from the output voltage to the current at the input here but it's again a short circuit test when we ground the input voltage. So the voltage to current translation across the capacitor here is nothing but an ohmic translation from the output voltage. So is the output voltage divided by the impedance of the capacitor which is just the output voltage into SC. Then we have a voltage to current translation to the output when the output is grounded. So the voltage into the capacitance when the output is grounded, we have an ohmic translation into current. In this case, is from the input voltage. So the input voltage divided by that impedance produces that voltage to current translation, which translates to V in SC. Lastly, we have the output impedance or the impedance into the capacitor from the output when the input is grounded. So that's nothing but the capacitor impedance which the capacitor alone can model. So what we've done here is we've turned this capacitor into an equivalent two-port network and basically, in other words, we split the effects into the effects of at the input and then the effects at the output. We derived an equivalent impedance at the input which is equivalent to a capacitor and an equivalent current source at the input and we also derived an equivalent current source at the output which is a function of the input voltage and an equivalent impedance at the output, which is just the capacitance. The equivalent current at the input is a function of the output voltage. Now the amplifier has an input resistance, has an output resistance, is an, as, as I mentioned earlier, has a low frequency transconductance current gain at the output. So what I'd like to do first is look at the combined effects of the capacitor components at the input. In other words, what is the basic, basic the combined impedance into uh, the feedback capacitor here? So for that, uh, we're going to look at that combined impedance. We're going to look at the combined conductance, which is just a reflection of the impedance. Basically, what we want to see is what is the translation from input voltage to the combined current into that capacitor. And we have two components. We have the current that goes into the capacitor alone here, which is just an ohmic translation, V in SC. And then we have the current into the current source at the input, but the current source is in the opposite direction, so we have a minus sign, and it's a function of the output voltage, so it's an ohmic translation of the output voltage. What we see here is that the Vn cancels for the first term, and for the second term, what we get is just the voltage gain. So when we combine these two effects, and we have a combined expression, what we have is that the equivalent conductance is 1 minus A times greater than just the conductance of the capacitor. Okay, we can also look at the equivalent 
transconductance of the amplifier when we look we see here that we have the transconductance here is the current into the output and then we also have another current into the output which is because of the capacitor the combined effects the combined effects of those two currents is basically just adding their current components so the combined transconductance of the entire circuit is the low frequency transconductance of the amplifier plus the conductance of the capacitor. Lastly, we want to look at the combined impedance at the output, which is basically the parallel combination of the impedance of the capacitor CF here and also the effective impedance that we see into the current source. So for that, like before, we're going to look at the combined conductance, which is nothing but a uh, reflection of the impedance. And more specifically, we want to see the translation from output voltage to current into this network, which has two components. We have the capacitor current on the right, and then we have the current source current. The capacitor current is an ohmic translation, so it's the output voltage into that impedance, and that is what we see here in the first term. The current into the current source is going in the opposite direction, so we have a negative sign here in front, uh, and it's actually an ohmic translation of the input voltage, so that's what we see here. But now we can combine those effects. On the left, we see that the output voltage is canceled. And on the right, what we see is that we have the reciprocal of the gain. So when we, when we combine that into a single expression, what we get is that the equivalent capacitance at the output is 1 minus 1 over A times uh, the original capacitance of the feedback capacitor. So when we combine all these effects into a schematic, what we see is that that feedback capacitor produces the effect of an equivalent input capacitance, an equivalent output capacitance, and it alters the equivalent transconductance across the circuit. Now all this is a little dry, now let us actually apply some very important conclusions. What about if the gain of the amplifier is less than 1 and is less than 1 by uh, a large amount? So basically, it amplifies, but it's inverting. So what we see here then is that a gain that is much less than 1, that means that this whole term here is much greater than 1, so the combined input capacitance is very high. That's very interesting. Uh, that also kind of makes sense because when we have a small variation of the input voltage, we see that the variation of the output voltage is inverting and is much higher. So the voltage across the capacitor is being amplified by the amplifier. Amplifying that voltage means that the capacitor draws a lot more current, and drawing a lot more current is the effect of a much higher capacitance. Interestingly, Use along the same lines, if we look at the output voltage and the gain is inverting, first we see that this it's inverting, that means that the equivalent output capacitance is greater than the original capacitance. But since it's 1 over A, the effects are minimal. So an inverting gain doesn't affect it by much, and we can see it here as well. If the output voltage fell by this amount, uh, that happened when the input voltage rose by a very low. So the effect of the amplifier across the capacitor has little effect on the voltage because now we're looking at the voltage in the opposite direction here. And what we're saying is that the variation at the input has very little effect on the overall voltage across the capacitor. So that's interesting. That's what we say are the effects of the Miller capacitor, which are to increase the effective input capacitance and um, at the output have no effect. But what about if the gain across the amplifier is pretty much unity gain and non-inverting? 
So what that means is then the equivalent capacitance at the input disappears because it cancels and the equivalent capacitance at the output also disappears. This is very, very interesting. <coughs> what this says is that if we have a non-inverting gain of 1, the capacitor across this amplifier essentially disappears. It has no effect. This makes sense because if the input voltage rises and the output voltage rises by the same amount, when we look at the capacitor voltage, there's no change in the capacitor voltage, so it draws no current. In other words, the voltage across the capacitor uh, doesn't change, and as a result, it doesn't produce an ohmic translated current. In other words, the capacitor doesn't exist with respect to dynamic signals. So uh, this is very interesting because it can be used to remove the effects of capacitance. Lastly, we have this equivalent transconductance. This is also interesting because at very low frequencies, the capacitor current is very low. It's an open circuit, basically. So the transconductance overwhelms that effect. But at very high frequencies, uh, the S is proportional to frequency, so the capacitor current increases uh, to such an extent that it can overwhelm the effect of the transconductance. And that means that we're going to add more energy to the output and we're going to have the effect of a zero. In other words, at very low frequencies, the capacitor is, is an open circuit and the gain translation from input to output is dictated by the uh, transconductance of the amplifier, but as frequency increases this capacitor shorts and we get a lot more current to the output, so much so that at some point it overwhelms the current across the, the current of the amplifier. And then that current increases with frequency and it basically produces the effect of a zero. This is a feed forward zero. This capacitor produces the effect of a feed forward zero. This feed forward zero is in phase when the gain is non-inverting because there's no phase inversion. You see here, there's no inversion in polarity. But when the gain is inverting, that means when the transconductance here is inverting, then this zero is an out-of-phase zero, produces the effect of an out-of-phase zero, which is a right half-plane zero. In other words, to summarize uh, the effects of this feedback capacitor, this feedback capacitor can either increase the equivalent in, uh, input capacitance or cancel it, it can have no effect on the output capacitance or it can also cancel it and it also produces the effect of a feed forward zero that is either in phase or out of phase depending on the polarity of the amplifier. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.